Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych, where we combine the latest neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. So in this video, we're gonna dive into something that I get asked about all the time on YouTube. Are these brain devices actually safe? And it is a very legitimate question. So we're gonna take a look at a couple of different things that I found on the rabbit hole of going down to try to figure out what is the true safety regulations surrounding these devices. We're gonna take a look at cellular signals. We're gonna take a look at Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. We're gonna take a look at specific mechanisms of the devices themselves and if it's safe to have near your brain on the outside of your skull. We're going to use something called uh, an electromagnetic frequency detector or EMF detector. And I'm actually gonna put this near these different devices that I've been talking about on this YouTube channel for a couple of years and figuring out if they actually are emitting levels of EMF that can be detected, how they compare to microwaves and wireless router boxes. And uh, it's really interesting. There's actually different findings for different devices and we're gonna dive into each one of those in this video, so stay tuned. So in order to understand the safety of these devices, we need to dive into research that's been going on for over 30 years. People have been concerned for some time about the radiation that cell phones emit, and it really applies to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. In order to take a look at the electromagnetic magnetic frequency radiation that's emitted by these devices, you have to take a look at the electromagnetic frequency or EMF spectrum. So everything from radio waves, microwaves, to visible light, to x-rays, to gamma waves, these are all in our environment. We have radio waves and television waves traveling through the area that allows us to hear the radio or watch older television sets. We have the microwave spectrum that will be more interesting to us as we move forward in this discussion about communication technologies. And then you have gamma waves that come from radioactive material. There's two main types of this radiation when it comes to interacting with biological tissue, there is ionizing radiation where the waves have become such a high frequency that they actually affect the DNA of your cells. And then there's non-ionizing radiation in which the waves are longer and do not have as much of a dramatic effect over our biology. And communication technologies fall into the non-ionizing radiation. So Generally, we're not worried about getting cancer or other mutations from frequencies that are lower than the non-ionizing cutoff point, but people are still concerned about the rate of exposure to it and wonder if it actually could can cause cancer, anxiety, sleep problems, or other problems with the brain and the rest of our biological tissue within our bodies. So not only does it matter what frequency these devices are emitting EMF, it actually depends on the power as well. So this device that we'll be using in this video measures that actual power of EMF frequency, and it does have an alarm at 0.4 micro Tesla, and that is what has been determined as a safety point at which the amount of power of EMF within a room that you'd be in 24 seven should be at. Now that's a different story if you get close to a cell phone or a microwave as we'll see in this video moving forward. So there are incremental smaller transient amount of time exposures to EMF that are allowed, but general overall exposure should be lower than 0.4 macro Tesla within a room. Now, as we move forward with these experiments, keep in mind that cell phones need to transmit a signal much farther than Wi-Fi or Bluetooth do, and that's because cell phones need to transmit their microwave signal to a cell phone tower, but Bluetooth and Wi-Fi need to transmit their signal over a much shorter range, meaning that they can use much less energy in doing so. All right, so I've got the electromagnetic field tester here. It's just a $30 device off of Amazon that you can get to take a look at magnetic waves as well as other waves within the electromagnetic spectrum. And what it's doing is measuring the power density of the signal that's coming. So I've got it on micro Tesla right now. And uh, there's a couple of other uh, settings that you could have it on in terms of units of measurement. But uh, I like to talk about Tesla, so I might as well put it on the micro Tesla. The alarm will actually go off at 0.4 micro Tesla. So one way to test this first off is we know our microwaves put out microwave energy. That's how it heats up food. It emits microwaves in a level of power that actually heats water molecules within the food. And that's how food actually heats up within the microwave. So it's pretty easy to get one of these and have it uh, test the EMF coming out of the microwave. So if you look right here, it's at zero, the microwave's off, right? And as soon as I turn on the microwave,
pretty immediately it'll go off the charts and I'll put on the max setting here. So we're well over 10, 13, 17. It clocked out at 17 micro tesla and actually went over the range that is um, safe. And this is measuring for EMF leaks within rooms. Uh, you know, people in construction and that type of thing use this to make sure that uh, power lines that they're putting in the walls or other uh, things that are going into a living structure are not breaking standards for the health of people overall. And obviously you shouldn't stand directly in a microwave, but you know, in terms of overall safety, microwaves are generally safe. You know, it's not gonna uh, radiate your skin. And we're not going, remember we're not going over that uh, frequency of EMF that's actually going to ionize your biological tissue, meaning that's not gonna cause mutations in your DNA and cause cancer or anything. At most, it'll just heat up uh, water molecules that are in its vicinity. And in order to actually have that happen, you'd have to have literally your hand in the microwave. So we're okay here, even though it is putting out uh, magnetic waves that cause the EMF tracker to go overboard. Okay, so conventional microwave ovens are a pretty obvious source of microwave radiation, but what about cell phones? First, I tested my cell phone by using Siri. Hey Siri, are you blinding me with EMF radiation right now? Then a simple phone call was the next test. As you can see, the phone will spike past the 0.4 micro tesla range when it is communicating with the tower. The highest reading that I saw was 0.8 micro tesla. Now what about a Wi-Fi box? I was surprised to find the field strength signaling the alarm on the EMF detector within six inches of the far end of the box, which must be where the Wi-Fi antenna is. The signal was up to two micro tesla. How about Bluetooth? With this little Bluetooth speaker, I was barely able to get 0.1 micro tesla that did not sound the alarm at any point. And now what you've probably been waiting for, let's test the EEG devices. I had a hard time finding any EMF coming out of the Muse 1 2016 version. The same went for the Muse 2 that came out in late 2018. Now for the Muse S, I got a bit stronger signal coming out of the pod. Now I'm not completely sure if this is due to leakage from the magnetic pod attachment that goes into the band or if you remember there was a lot of complaints about the Muse 2 regarding Bluetooth connectivity so I think that it's possible that they upped the ante on the Bluetooth signal for the Muse S so they didn't have the same problems but now the signal is stronger so we're picking it up here so very interesting results there for the Neo Rhythm, there was definitely a strong EMF signal, but remember that the Neo Rhythm is actually putting out magnetic pulses as a mechanism to stimulate the brain. So it's likely that these are not microwave frequency pulses, but they are TMS pulses that are much, much slower, just a couple of beats per second, more in line with radio wave frequencies. And what I can say about the power of these pulses is that they are a thousand times weaker than the clinical TMS devices that have been through the rigors of FDA testing and decades of clinical use on hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. So I don't think that there's any concern here regarding radiation coming from the Neo Rhythm. And on the Halo Sport, you get something similar with the EMF device picking up direct electrical signals from the nibs, but we know that these are pulses of electricity that get absorbed by the scalp and are non-ionizing, so should be safe there as well. All right, so what's this all telling us? So there's different types of EMF coming out of everyday appliances. Microwaves emit EMF. There's EMF coming out of our cell phones and Wi-Fi boxes. Basically, most of us are exposed to this stuff all day long, every day. Now, it is concerning that NIH studies have shown that near constant exposure of maximum strength allowed microwave EMF, similar to what is used in cell phones, caused cancerous heart tumors in male rats. And that study just came out in 2018 after 10 years of research. But that's hard to translate into human everyday users. Most of us are not constantly on our cell phones nine hours a day with it right on our head. The rats got nine hours of exposure every day 
from before they were born to death and were trapped in a little exposure chamber. And it affected only male rats, didn't seem to affect the female rats. And the male rats ended up having longer lifespans despite evidence for having cancers. So to say the data is mixed is a given. And I have to question the influences on the rats' cancer rate to include locking them up in a box for their whole lives. At the end of the day, we are being exposed to EMF that's much stronger from our cell phones and Wi-Fi boxes than anything put off by these Bluetooth wearables by a factor of 100. Now there's the concern that the devices are right next to our head, but then you could argue that people spend all day with Bluetooth earphones right near their brains as well, and some health agencies advocate using headphones, if not Bluetooth headphones, over your cell phone in your ear, so if that gives you more confidence in the safety of these neuro wearables, then have at it. Overall, the data on cell phones is really mixed. After 30 years of epidemiological data, we have not seen an increase in brain cancers in humans. And this is after devices have been put out with higher strength, new technology, more and more EMF being put out. And again, all this is theoretically non-ionizing radiation that's not been shown to have any effect on biological tissue other than heating it up a degree or two when in direct contact, depending on the power of the signal. So I'm very convinced that the benefits of these neuro wearables outweigh any potential harm at this point. If putting on one of these wearables for 30 to 60 minutes a day gets you a great meditation session, I think that far outweighs the additional EMF you may be exposed to. Now I would recommend not putting a Wi-Fi box right next to the head of your bed in case there is some influence in your sleep cycles or anxiety levels, and also not living next to high power cell phone towers that can emit EMF at a high power frequency. You you could see from the EMF detector that we couldn't even detect a signal from Muse 1 and Muse 2. Muse S had a little bit of a higher signal as well as with the Dream, but uh, going back to the Dream, the manufacturers actually designed it so it actually does not emit Bluetooth EMF at night, which I think was brilliant, so that all those fears can be uh, alleviated about EMF exposure overnight when actually using the Dream. The signals that we picked up from the Neo Rhythm and the Halo Sport were both due to the electromagnetic pulse frequency that is the actual backbone of TMS when we look at NeoRhythm, as well as the electropulsing from the Halo Sport. And if you look at NeoRhythm specifically, it is much lower power than the FDA approved TMS systems, which have shown not to cause cancer. We know it's not ionizing radiation, and there's been at least a couple of decades of uh, research showing that it doesn't have adverse effects that we would fear from being exposed to electromagnetic pulses. The frequencies are simply much too low to be ionizing radiation, and they're having a different mechanism of action than you would expect from uh, like microwave radiation technologies. As far as the Halo Sport, we know those are electrical pulses, so not nearly as concerned there. And getting back to the overall Bluetooth signal from the devices, again, I don't think that they are a significant high health risk to worry about when using these devices. What I would say is I think that it's important to take a break from all these things at least once a month. Turn off your cell phone, all the technology, and head out into wilderness and take a break from all this EMF or even just the stimulation from looking at screens and being exposed to technology in general so that your body and brain can rest. I do think that we can subconsciously feel some of these stimulating frequencies in the air, maybe being in urban environments, and this can lead to anxiety if proper breaks are not taken, so make sure to take a break every once in a while and just turn everything off and just expose yourself to nature so that you can recoup so that when you come back you can use these neuro wearable technologies that much more effectively to further your neuro enhancement. So there it is. Those are my results. Hopefully some hard data for you to assuade your fears in using these neuro wearables. It's Dr. Cody Rawl. Thanks so much for the listen. I'll talk to you next time.